Hi everyone, and welcome back to a newest episode of Mastering Manufacturing. Today, for a change, instead of speaking about CNC machining, we thought we would be speaking about one of the most popular additive manufacturing technologies right now, and it's MGF. So today, I'd like to be going over a few parts that we have here laid out for you, and then basically, I'd like to cover the pros, the cons of the MGF technology, what you can expect from it uh, compared to other additive manufacturing technologies, and of course, then we'll present you each part uh, with their specificities. So the first thing we're gonna be focusing here is the material. MGF primarily works with uh, a material that is called PA12 uh, from HP, which is basically a form of nylon. Now, nylon is a very interesting material when you do just mechanical parts, for instance, because it has good mechanical properties, and also when melted through a power-based additive manufacturing technology, it enables you to have quite a good surface finish uh, while still having very good mechanical properties. It has quite a good chemical resistance. It can be watertight under the right conditions, and we'll go over that later. And also, generally speaking, in terms of tolerances, you have a base tolerance of plus minus 0.3 millimeters, which is not precision mechanics, but can be definitely more than enough for most mechanical usages. Now, I'm quickly gonna go over some of the cons that are generally recognized as drawbacks for that technology. Uh, for instance, the main one being, uh, which is again, not a problem for some people, but for other ones it may be, is the color of the material. The material that is primarily used as we covered before is HPPA12, and that nylon comes in a gray color once the parts have been transformed. Now, for some people, it won't be a problem because if you're doing a mechanical part, you don't mind it being in that blotchy gray color. So if you want parts that are good looking right from the start, MGF may pose a little bit of a disadvantage here. The second part is that MGF um, has post-processing systematically. So meaning if you have very small details that are included uh, onto your design, you will probably at some point get those very small features damaged while the parts are being blasted uh, after the build cleanup phase. Now to go a bit more in details um, on the pros and cons with actual parts in context, I'll be just picking up some parts as we go. Here, if you look at those parts, those are actually parts that I designed not so long ago for a uh, coolant fixture on a CNC machine. So you can see how very quickly I was able just in a matter of, I don't know, not even five to 10 minutes to just go on uh, my CAD software, uh, design something that would just literally project coolant around the, the drill bit and then enable me to have coolant done um, uh, coolant basically just projected all over the surface. I didn't care about the parts being gray. The one advantage I want to be going over here is that the parts can be watertight if you have a big enough um, uh, wall thickness. And here actually I tested some other of those things and they're perfectly watertight for what I need in terms of coolant usage. The second part here is a part that we used for um, the homepage of our website. And it's been designed as a um, just a bracket that would hold typically some wires inside of a car. Um, let's say if you have a machine and there's a scroll machine or even a car, in, the, in that case where you need to um, uh, funnel some wires from an area uh, to another one, then you would have all the wires put in there and that part would be probably snatched in place uh, and fixed to other components. So here, same, you probably wouldn't mind about the color, but then using that as a transition, if you do mind about the color, you can get those parts dyed, and this is what you will get as a uh, base black color. So meaning the part will, you know, when it is removed from the build, it will still be clean, so beat blasted in order to remove all the remaining powder that may still be here. Um, and then the part will be dyed, giving it this uh, deep black hue that you see here on the part. So giving it already a bit of a more finished look that may already get a bit closer to what you would get if you were to do injection molding, for instance, or machine plastics. Now, if we move to the third part, that is, I think, my favorite. I think that's one of the most beautiful design parts we have here. It's, uh, sorry to say it's a bit useless, actually, but it could very well be used in an industrial system. Um, Actually, one of the fun parts is that if you learn a bit more about the uh, MGF technology, some parts in the MGF machines have been made with the MGF technology. And this could very well be one of those parts where basically I think it's, a, it, it's basically just a duct uh, that will go into an industrial machine to carry air from a point A to a point B. It would be quite expensive to make that part in injection molding. And here, 
uh, the person who designed it had in mind to have an end part looking uh, design uh, or an end part looking finished part. And so the part has been subsequently dyed black after, um, after the finishing process, which makes it look quite finished, I have to say. Here are a couple other things I can actually describe about the key differences between an SLS part and the MGF part and what that will mean for you as a designer. So let's say you want to make five units of this part in SLS or in MGF and you have to choose between the two. The first thing you need to understand about MGF is um, about the process itself and how the build works. Basically the box where you put all the raw powder before it is melted. Um, all that powder after you have placed all your parts inside the box in MGF all that powder can be recycled because of course you're not going to fill a cube that is the size of the build. And because in MGF you can reuse up to 80% of that powder from one build to the other one, it makes it sometimes less expensive and much faster to make the parts as compared to SLS where you can only generally recycle up to 50% of the parts. So that's of course price and lead time considerations. The second, um, the second consequence of that being that if you order, let's say, just five of these, and then I encourage you to look at the size of an, we can actually show the size of an MGF build. If you only order five of those and come to a manufacturer, it is highly likely that they will have to wait, whether it be in MGF and SLS, until they have other customer parts to fill their build and have um, a more competitive price, basically. These startup costs are generally higher in SLS because you need to put more parts in your build before you print due to the lower recycled percentage of powder from one build to the other. So basically here, both in terms of lead time and price, oftentimes MGF will be quite competitive, which will come directly to your advantage. Now, some other considerations, we already touched a bit on this before, but the surface, um, the surface finish is slightly different between the two technologies. In SLS here, you may see that parts are not systematically be blasted after they were removed from the build, and sometimes, even though the finish is still a bit grainy, sometimes you may be able to have slightly finer looking parts in SLS um, compared to MGF, although that's definitely not the case. More generally though, I have to say that with SLS you have a lot of process variability due to the very wide range of brands that build machines and you know the people designing your process. With MGF, we are getting much closer to what would be considered almost a plug and play technology, meaning HP did a wonderful job standardizing the standard operating procedures, the maintenance procedures, what materials you have to use, etc. So it's highly likely like you will have a lot of consistency from one build to the other if you follow the manufacturer's recommendation on how to use the machine. So for you as a customer, it's highly likely that even though the surface may not be the most perfect one for you, you will be able to learn very intimately um, what MGF can give you in terms of surface finish and design with that in mind. So I hope you enjoyed this little presentation of MGF and I hope this encourages you to try out this technology if you haven't yet. And then of course, feel free to let us know if you have any questions in the comment section and I hope to see you in the next video.